3, where he talks about molecular polarity, intermolecular forces, and properties. Chem cat appears every spot. Okay. So we have six things to make sure we learn. All right, please take a good look at them, and then at the end, when we're done, all right, read these pages in the book. Do these things, and remember I put this in the end as well, and hopefully those diagrams will help. Okay, so what does polarity mean? It means ended. So we looked at polar bonds. Polar bonds are between atoms, um, and what you do is you subtract the electronegativity of the two atoms. If the electronegativity difference is small, small electronegativity difference, then you get an equal sharing of electrons, which is nonpolar. Fine. Nonpolar sharing, nonpolar covalent bond. But the um, bigger electronegativity difference, bigger end, then one atom that's more electronegative pulls the electrons towards its side of the bond, and you get what's called a dipole bond. Okay, so we draw an arrow, this points towards, towards higher electronegativity. All right, that is for bonds only, okay, or that describes bonds. But when we look at a molecule, look, there's a bond over here and a bond over there. So we have to look at the whole molecule to decide if the molecule is polar. So polar molecules, got to look at the whole molecule. So I'd look between H and O, I'd find the difference is a big difference. So I draw a dipole arrow, all right, on that bond, just from that. And then on this bond, from that. And then overall, the molecule is kind of negative up here and kind of positive down here. So this is a polar molecule because the two bonds together are polar and the shape. So bonds and shape make a molecule polar, okay? Now that doesn't always mean you're going to have a polar hole if you have polar bonds. So here's some things to consider. If you want to see if you have a polar molecule, there has to be polar bonds. That's check one, right? There has to be polar bonds. So the electronegativity difference has to be between um, 0.5 and 1.9, okay? And you need a polar shape that a shape that doesn't cancel out those polar bonds. How would you get a nonpolar molecule? Either you have no polar bonds or there's polar bonds that they cancel. So let's look at what that means. Is the molecule polar? Polar molecule if there's polar bonds here, and then when you draw the dipole arrows, then the top and the bottom have different polarities of the polar molecule. All right, in this one, there's only a polar bond between C and CL. So I draw the dipole arrow, and then I look, and over here we have kind of negative, over here we have kind of positive, so this is a polar molecule because that there's nothing to cancel out that polar bond. Here's another polar molecule because the dipole arrow points towards chlorine, and so this side is negative, that side is positive. So these are all polar, nonpolar molecules. Well, here's a bond between C and O. That has electronegativity difference where oxygen pulls more on the electron. This also has one. But now I have two polar bonds that cancel out, so no side of the molecule is an opposite of the other side. This side's negative, that side's negative, so it's nonpolar. The dipole arrows cancel. Same with this one, dipole arrows go in equal but opposite directions in tetrahedral shape, so it's overall nonpolar. These are overall polar. Okay, a couple more polar molecules. Here's one bond that's polar, all right? So this is going to be a kind of negative side of the molecule. Down here is going to be kind of positive, so it's polar. Here's a polar bond, all right? And um, you're going to have a kind of negative side of the molecule, kind of positive, so it's a polar molecule too. Right, this one has dipole arrow, dipole arrow, dipole arrow, pointing to the top of a pyramid. Right, so the top of the pyramid is kind of negative, kind of negative. The bottom of the pyramid is kind of pyramid is kind of positive. So this is a polar molecule because of the arrows, um, bonds and arrows. Here we have bonds and arrows, but they cancel, so it's nonpolar. Bonds and arrows, flat triangle, cancel, flat triangle. Cancel. Right. So nonpolar. And this is um, bonds are polar, but they cancel, so it's a nonpolar molecule. So here's the main idea polarity of molecules. 
polarity of the bonds doesn't cancel, then it's a polar molecule. The polarity of the bonds cancels, it's a nonpolar molecule. Or if there was no polarity of bonds in the first place, it's nonpolar. So no arrows at all on bonds. Nonpolar molecule. Okay, the bond is polar if the electronegativity difference is between 0.5 to 1.9. All right. A molecule is polar if the bond is polar and the shape doesn't cancel. So, oh look, it's CO2 again. Polar bond, polar bond, cancels out, no polarity on the molecule. All right, polar bond, polar bond, polar bond, flat triangle. So the shape matters, triangle. This is linear. Okay. Flat triangle cancels. Polar bond, polar bond, polar bond. Kind of negative up here, kind of positive up here, polar molecule. Uh, so this shape is a triangle pyramid. Triangle pyramid. Or trigrano pyramid. <laughs> Alright, this one. Um, oh look, it's CH4, CH, um, I wouldn't even draw, okay, so no arrow at all, okay, so it's an outboard molecule. Alright, that is it with polarity and molecules. So, what does this mean? What does this mean? Well, let's look. Here's hexane. It's very nonpolar. No arrows, no polar bonds. And guess what? It doesn't mix with water. You have two layers. Here's sugar. Look at all of the polar um, polarity of this molecule. It's got positive and negative sides all over the place, right? Here's the um, structure of the molecule. And so this is polar, and this is polar, and this is nonpolar. And so what does that mean about its properties? Well, hexane and water don't mix because one's polar and one's not. Sugar and water mix because they're both polar. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about the difference between bonds that make up molecules and molecules that interact with other molecules. So inter means between. Interstate is like holding hands between the states. Oh, yeah, let's keep our states together, all right? Intra means within. If you want to um, have intramurals, you stay within your school, or if you want your um, humorous... To hold, to be connected to your shoulder within your body, those are the um, intra-molecular forces. Okay, so covalent bonds are intra. Hopefully that's what you're going to say. So they're within the molecule, making the atoms stay together by sharing. Okay, so this bond, electrons between oxygen and hydrogen, that is a covalent bond, right? It's like the bones inside your hand keep your hand together. Okay. Intermolecular forces are between molecules. So this was the one we saw on the page before. That's a covalent bond between H and O. Inter is where this molecule and this molecule are attracted, and this molecule and this molecule are attracted. Inter means between two different molecules. Okay. So intermolecular are usually weaker than intra. Intermolecular is based on molecular polarity. So that's why we were talking about is the molecule polar or not. So there's three kinds of ways a molecule could be. A molecule could be nonpolar. A molecule could be polar. And then I'm going to talk about a case where I think a molecule is superpolar. All right. So let's talk about the forces caused by these interactions. This is um, three forces are London dispersion forces, also called Van der Waals forces. Um, it's because molecules are nonpolar. Right? So this is for nonpolar molecules. Uh, well, it's for all molecules with electrons, but it's the only one for nonpolar. Um, the electrons get unbalanced. So they have small and positive, small positive and negative attractions because of uh, electrons moving around. A dipole-dipole force is a permanent force between two molecules because there's positive and negative sides to molecules. So this happens for polar molecules. Polar molecules um, display this force. H bonds or hydrogen bonds. 
Well, these are the superpolar molecules. It's when a hydrogen is bonded directly to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in a molecule. And so there's a really, really polar bond making a really, really polar molecule. And so um, it's called a hydrogen bonding attraction. Okay, so here's dispersion. All atoms have electrons. And then if at one moment in time those electrons are unevenly distributed, then an atom next door could get forced to have a dipole. And then the atom next door could also get forced to have a dipole. This happens with molecules as well. And it's the weakest kind of intermolecular force, but once you have more atoms, it gets stronger. Okay, A dipole-dipole force is a permanent positive and negative attraction because of the polarity of molecules, polar molecules. Right. So let's look at what it means to be a polar molecule. Wow, can you even see that? Okay. So here's a permanently polar molecule. It's got a kind of negative end and kind of positive end. So it's going to be attracted to another molecule with the same kinds of polarity. Right. So this force is intermolecular, intermolecular, and it's stronger than dispersion because every one of these molecules always has that permanent um, polarity. Okay, hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding, I said it three times. Um, when hydrogen is involved in a molecule and it's bonded only to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, then that bond is really polar, so that makes the overall molecule very polar. And so it's a super strong attraction. So um, it only happens when there's hydrogen in an atom, in a molecule that's bonded to N, O, or F. And it makes the molecule superpolar. So these are polar, but not only polar, they're superpolar. And so it's an extra strong intermolecular force. Okay. To have London dispersion forces, it has to be nonpolar um, due to bonds or to canceling. Okay, so nonpolar because no arrows. No arrows on this one. Nonpolar because the atoms are the same. Nonpolar because the arrows cancel, and nonpolar because the arrows cancel. Um, so this is for bond, and then that means there will be no arrows, and this is for molecule. And so overall molecule is nonpolar. So if you have nonpolar molecules because of canceling or because of nonpolar bonds, then you will have London dispersion forces only. Okay, now, if you only have London dispersion forces, which one's going to be stronger? Well, the one with more atoms. One with more atoms, because more atoms means more electrons. More electrons means more chances of inducing those dipoles. Okay, so that one wins. That one wins. That one wins. One with more atoms it has stronger London dispersion forces. All right, dipole-dipole has polar bonds that don't cancel. So here's a molecule. There would no, be no arrows on these because C and H is a 0.4 difference. But there would be an arrow here. So you'd have a kind of negative and a kind of positive. So it's a polar molecule. And so it's going to have a dipole, dipole force with another polar molecule. The same with these ones. Once you see the shape, right, polar molecule. And OCl2 is going to be a polar molecule. Okay. Hydrogen bonding. This molecule and H is bonded to it. Okay. So this is a polar bond, polar molecule, and the bonds have hydrogen and nitrogen. So it's going to be superpolar, superpolar molecule. Polar molecule. Okay. And so it's going to have hydrogen bonding. Same with H2O because the H is bonded to the O. Is this one? CH3Cl is going to look like this. For the dot structure, um, these H's are bonded to carbon. So it cannot be hydrogen bonding because the H has to be bonded to an O, an N, or an F. Here we go with this one. This looks like it might, right? We got H2O. But then you look at the dot structure and you're like, wait a second. The hydrogen's bonded to a carbon, so this cannot hydrogen bond. Okay. So if we had to rank them, London dispersion force is the weakest. Dipole, dipole, medium, medium. <laughs> and hydrogen bonding is strongest, like the H bomb, you know, pretty strong uh, reaction there, right? So um, just to give you a way to remember them. All right, so what do these intermolecular forces cause? Well, viscosity is a resistance to flow. So strong intermolecular forces means high resistance to flow.
state of matter. Solids are most attracted to each other. Liquids are kind of attracted to each other. Gases are barely attracted to each other. So high intermolecular forces means um, solid or liquid. Solid or liquid. All right. Volatility, ability to turn into a gas easily. Weak attractions means that it's going to be volatile because they can escape. The molecules can escape. All right. So they have a high rate of evaporation. Surface tension. Molecules that are attracted to each other are going to have a high surface tension at the surface of the liquid. Okay. So hydrogen bonding is really a good way to help explain why water does what water does. Right. So thank goodness for hydrogen bonding, or else that polar bear could not float on that ice because that or be standing on the ice because the ice wouldn't float. Okay. Um, and high surface tension keeps water um, like like you can see. Um, bugs floating on water, right? So here's a bug. I'm a bug, right? And I'm floating on the water because of the high surface tension of the water. I don't know what those are. Legs? Uh, antenna? That's a happy bug. Anyway, high surface tension. Okay. Difference between um, bonding and intramolecular forces. So intra is within, and we're talking about covalent now. There's also ionic and metallic, and that's within. That's what holds... Um, Substances together through bonds between atoms. Okay. Inter is between molecules. It's a little bit weaker, and there's three kinds London dispersion, dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bond. And it holds one molecule next to another. Okay. Finally, to review dun, 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 shapes of molecules and bond polarity determine if a molecule is polar or not. Intermolecular forces are weaker than intra. Inter are between molecules, and there's three kinds. Intermolecular forces cause bulk properties like viscosity, volatility, surface tension, and state of matter. And water is great because of hydrogen. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Woohoo! Oh, look, ChemCat's back. Please look at your book. There's great pictures. ChemCat says so, so you got to do it. Peace out from Herbs. Oh, look, more objectives. Not more, the same ones. See if you know them. For real now, peace out.